I think I might have a problem with obsessively reading alien romance novels. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. Sorry if my voice sounds a little weird, I have a mint in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry if this video is very late. Um, June is almost over and I have yet to film my May wrap up. I've just been really busy. I've had three readathons this month, so it's been a little hard to try and find time to film this wrap up. So also sorry if you hear noise in the background. There's construction next door, so can't do anything about that. I ended up reading 15 books in a month of May. Five were ebooks, five were audiobooks, and five were physical reads. So yay me. I like, I made a goal for myself to read more physically because I believe in April is that the month before may april <laughs> i only read one physical book and that was like my least favorite read of the um whole month that is different for this month i read a lot of five star books physically so but anyways i'll just jump right on into this video so as always i'm going to be going in order of my least favorite to my favorite and my least favorite book was piper by jay asher and jessica freeberg with illustrations by jeff stokely i do not have this book physically anymore but at the time i did physically read it this was a library book this is a graphic novel this is basically a book talking about the pied piper like a graphic novel and a girl falling in love with him basically um i will say the art was beautiful i really enjoyed the art but i have many gripes there were no transitions from scene to scenes like there was times where conversations would just cut off and go to another scene and there was no transition there were no chapter indicators i think if there were chapter indicators the book would have been way better and it was very 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 insta loving and there was no chemistry between the two love interests at all like she basically falls in love with him before she even like sees him which is ridiculous she just hears like oh the pied piper's in town and then she like ends up falling in love with him like honey <laughs> and i have more thoughts in my goodreads review i go in full like full detail of what i thought about this so for time's sake if you want to know about it i will leave a link down below to that and um i did read this during my skelly wagathon reading vlog and i will leave that down below if you want to know my live reaction thoughts okay the next couple books are part of a series so i decided to just group them together a bunch most of them are four stars but i decided to just group them all together to get this over with this is the ice planet barbarian books i talk about these books often i won't go into a lot of detail basically they're sci-fi romance books about women who get crash landed onto this deserted ice planet and the only um people that live there is one tiny village of like sukui people who are like blue people you can see by the cover they're like blue people and they like have like lifelong mates it's about each human woman falling in love and finding her mate. So I'm gonna just be listing those off for you. I have from the Ice Planet Barbarian series, The Barbarian Before Christmas. This was an ebook and it is number 15.5 in the series and I gave this one four stars. Next is Barbarian's Beloved. This was also an ebook and this is number 16 in the series and I gave this also a four stars. Next we have the spinoff series Ice Home. These are all by Ruby Dixon by the way, I forgot to mention that. We have Willa's Beast. I read this in e-reader format and this is number three in the series and I gave this a four out of five stars. And then we have Gail's Family which was an ebook number four in the series and I gave this one three stars. Next and last we have Angie's Gladiator and this was also an ebook and number five in the series and I gave this one also a four out of five stars. I really enjoy this series and in June I um, will be completing all of the books that are currently out so I will be up to date on all the Ruby Dixon books which is over 20 in this in these two series combined so I think I'm very proud of myself for completing the series in the past I think I've read them all in one year like I didn't start in January I started I believe last summer. The next book that I'm going to talk about today is Paper Princess by Erin Watt. I didn't know this at the time but Erin Watt is actually an author duo pen name so it's actually not just one author it's two. This was a physical read for me. I read this during the Scally Wagathon and I will link it down below. I have some I want to say funny live reaction to 
me reading this book. People think that it's funny, my reaction to reading this book. This is the first book in the Royals series. I completed the second book in June. I am about to start on the third one. I ended up giving this book like a 3.5 or 3.75 out of 5 stars. I'm not really sure. I don't think I need a definite rating for this. It's just in between there. So basically this is about our girl named Ella Harper and she ends up living on her own, ends up working as a stripper to earn money because she's homeless. Her mother has died and she doesn't know who her father is. She just is trying to make ends meet and so this 17 year old girl, I believe she's 17, is stripping for money. Turns out that her long lost father ends up dying and he's like this really big billionaire basically and he ends up giving like the um, guardianship to his best friend and um, his name is Callum Royal, I believe. He ends up bringing her into his home to basically save her from the way she's living. And turns out all of Callum's sons hate her, all five of them. And it's kind of a forbidden romance between Ella and one of the brothers. And it's a hate to love trope as well. This also has mature content in it. So if you're not into that, maybe not go for this book, but it's not that bad, I don't think. I think of this book as a soap opera. Like, you know that it's probably not like the most well written or it's very problematic, but you're addicted. Like there are just a bunch of things in this book that would not happen in real life at all and I know that, but I just cannot help reading these books. <laughs> like they're very, very, very addictive. I would recommend this book if you don't mind reading something that's problematic. Like I know this series is problematic but like I can't help but really enjoy my time reading it. And I will say these books, each book so far, I've read the first two, have ended on quite a big cliffhanger. <laughs> if you wanna read a book that has a cliffhanger, also go for this one, I guess. Okay, the next two books are a part of a series that I listened to. We have the first one, or the second book in the series, Guilty as Sin by Megan March. I listened to the first one, I believe, back in April. And this was an audiobook I read through Libby. And it's a second book in the Sin Trilogy, and it is a second chance romance book. Kind of a Romeo and Juliet-esque book where the families kind of hate each other, but the two main characters want to be together. Nothing else I really have to say about this book. Uh, I don't really remember any of it. I gave it a four stars at the time, but I don't remember anything else. I read the third and final book in the trilogy, Reveling in Sin by Megan March. This was also an audiobook on Livy, third book in the series, and I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed the conclusion and how the story wrapped up. Up. The next book that I read was Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This was a physical read for me and this is the second book in the Daughter of the Pirate King duology. Um, and I also read this during the Scally Wagathon. So if you want to know my life thoughts, go check out that vlog. Uh, basically, this is about the daughter of a really renowned, ruthless pirate king. She goes undercover and pretends to be captured by her father's enemies because they have this missing piece of a map that her father really wants so she goes undercover and pretends to be captured to try and find this missing piece on this ship and she may or may not end up falling for the first mate of the enemy's ship. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. At the time I think I gave it 5 stars but after a while it was like sitting on it. I don't know it's just like it ended too abruptly for me. I think this book would have been way better if we had an epilogue like it would have been so much better it just ended too abruptly for me like we have this big battle fight scene and then one chapter after that and that's over <laughs> i just would have loved a little bit more from the ending for this book the next book that i read was sense and sensibility by jane austen i listened to this on my libby app as an audiobook i read this for the classics a thon that took place the whole month of may this is my third Jane Austen novel and I really ended up enjoying this book. Well, we have our two main characters, Marianne and Eleanor, their sisters, and this book is basically about them dealing with guy troubles. <laughs> basically both these girls fall in love with these guys, two different guys, and um, just the dudes being big douche canoes <laughs> and them trying to realize who they are in the midst of this and how they will grow as a person and I really enjoyed it a lot. This audiobook was 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 so great and I, I gotta say I wish I had my own Colonel Brandon. <laughs> I ended up giving this book a 4.5 
out of five stars. And the reason why I did not give it a full five stars is because it ended too abruptly for me. And we were told a lot of things instead of shown them at the end. Like we were told like, oh, so-and-so marries so-and-so. Well, I wanted to see that and I wanted to see how it ends. And then we didn't really get to see how the story ends. So main gripe again is that I wanted more from the ending but I still really 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 loved this and if you want to know my live thoughts while reading this book be sure to check out my classics a thon reading blog down below next we have days of blood and starlight by Lainey Taylor and I ended up listening to this book because I think the audiobook route is just the perfect way to go for these books the narrator is absolutely fantastic I'm in the middle of the third and final book in the trilogy and I am dying inside <laughs> this is the second book to the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy I love this series so much <laughs> I gave this book five stars really loved it I can't really say anything about it or give you a summary about it since it's the second book a short summary of the first book basically we have our main character named Karu who um, has been raised since birth by these people called the chimera who are like basically creatures made out of different creatures like you have like a half goat half gazelle half human creature it's just creatures made out of different animal parts kind of human parts too and then we have our other main character Akiva who's an angel and it's like their story together it's urban fantasy um and I love urban fantasy I think this series made me really love urban fantasy because I hadn't really loved it before this series so I guess I owe that to Lainey Taylor because I've never been into like the mortal instruments and stuff like that and I cannot wait to finish this series for sure. While we're talking about the Daughter Smoke and Bone trilogy, I also read Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor with illustrations by Jim DiBartolo. Jim DiBartolo is actually Lainey Taylor's husband, which I think is so cute. Um, her husband illustrated a lot in this book. This is a novella for the Daughter Smoke and Bone trilogy. This is, I believe, number 2.5. It's basically about our main characters Zuzana and Mick and their love story because we didn't really get to see that while it was happening in the main trilogy so Lainey Taylor wrote like a novella of how they actually got together because the main trilogy is basically Carew's perspective so we don't get to see anything really in Susanna and Mick's perspective and so I really loved how we got a glimpse into their lives in this book and how they came together and it was super duper duper cute and I for sure gave this a five out of five stars. The second to last book on this list is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I listened to the second half of this book for the classics of Thawn in May and I love this book one of my favorite classics of all time just gotta say this is about four sisters in america during the civil war era and like them discovering who they are and maybe finding a husband or a love interest along the way and i just love the march sisters so much and just their whole family and i cannot get enough of them i cannot wait for the new adaptation coming out in december with meryl streep and social ronin and Emma Watson coming out. I'm seeing that on Christmas Day for freaking sure. <laughs> I love this. The audiobook was fantastic. I know this is not a book for everybody, but I loved it just because of the nostalgia it holds for me because I grew up with the movie with Winona Ryder. I just love everything about it and I love how you get a glimpse into married life in like classic novel because a lot of classic novels end with them getting married. Like just like the last page. Oh, this person ends up marrying this person yay when in this one like you realize oh this person gets married halfway through the book and you get to see what married life is like what their children are like and I loved that I loved it I also read this in my classics of Thawne reading vlog so if you want to know my live reaction thoughts be sure to check out that vlog linked down below <laughs> and my favorite book that I read in May I do not have physically because it was a library book The Governess Game by Tessa Dare I loved this book. This was a buddy read with Amy from Book Girl Abroad. I will leave her channel linked down below. I loved this book so much! <laughs> Mainly because I related to the main character a lot. She's a governess and I'm a nanny so I just like I loved how I could relate to her in a lot of ways. I physically read this. I yes gave it a five out of five stars. This woman ends up accidentally becoming a governess for this man. He has two wards. They're not like his children, but he um, has to take care of these two girls and she ends up accidentally getting this job. She may or may not end up falling for her boss. I just 
loved it. I loved it a lot. I read it through the library, so like I need a physical copy. Like I need it. And I already pre-ordered the third and next book in the series coming out later this year. And I cannot wait! If you're into historical romance books, I totally recommend Tessa Dare. I love her book so much. But yes, I totally recommend this book. <laughs> Anyways, there y'all have it. That was my May wrap up. I tried to make it a little bit shorter than my other wrap ups just because I don't remember all that much about any of these books. And I feel like my videos that I've come out with recently are really long. <laughs> so I tried to talk a little bit faster in this one. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to see more content from me. And also all my social media links are in the description, my bookstagram, my Twitter, my Goodreads, all that jazz. So be sure to check those out if you want to follow me on all of those. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!